so today we are going to deal with uh, some basic concepts and the basic definitions related to electrostatics electrostatics uh, at times uh, this proves to be quite an important topic from the point of view of uh, KVPY a couple of questions may be asked from this topic in KVPY exam uh, in both SA or SX stream uh, but uh, the questions are quite easy so from that point of view it is uh, recommended to go through this topic some basics of this topic so let's start something some basics of this topic so we are going to deal with electrostatics electro stands for charge and statics stands for at rest so here we deal with charges that are at rest we all know that <coughs> charge charge is the fundamental characteristic of matter just like mass just like mass uh, charge is also one of the fundamental characteristics of matter charges are of two types a positive charge and b negative charge let's talk about uh, some properties of charges we all know that as a basic property like charges repel and unlike charges <coughs> attract each other the second important property we can see that charge is conserved the whole charge of this universe is conserved as third property we can say that charge is quantized that is q is equal to any in fact plus minus any where n is an integer which could be 1 2 3 and any integer and is the charge of an electron that is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb <coughs> so what do i mean by this quantization of charge is that let's suppose i have an object let's let it name it uh, let's name it as a if i want to give some charge to this object then uh, i can do it uh, in two ways i can either provide it uh, let's say one electron or two electron or three electron or maybe four electron or any integral multiple of electron i cannot provide this object a 2.5 electrons so that's not valid so the charge is quantized it means i can provide this object a charge equal to the charge of an electron or two electrons or three electrons never 2.5 3.5 4.25 kind of electrons cannot be given to this charge a to this object a same way if i want to make some object b to be a positively charged object then what will i do is i'll extract i'll take out either one electron from it or two electron from it or three electron from it i cannot take out 3.25 electron from the object so always the charge acquired by an object is in the form of integral multiples of the charge of an electron <coughs> so that was my third property with the charge fourth property is <coughs> static charge produces electric 
<coughs> electric field while moving charges may produce magnetic field as well as electric field static charge will only produce electric field while the moving charges can produce both electric field as well as magnetic field uh, one of the property could be charges invariant charges invariant as the name suggests charges invariant that is charge is not variable while mass is mass is variant mass is variable what do i mean by this is that mass of an object that is m dash is equal to m not which is the rest mass of the object 1 minus v square by c square using this formula i get the mass of the object mass of the object which is a uh, bit heavier as compared to the rest mass of the object when the object is moved at very high speeds uh, particles uh, uh, subatomic particles or maybe you can say electrons or protons have very high speed that is why this term this term is not equal to zero in case of uh, particles having very uh, lesser mass they move with very high speed so this term is not negligible that is why the uh, mass of the object <coughs> at very high speeds gets changed but in case of charge it do not happen the, in case of charges the charge is invariant irrespective of the speed of charge whatever is the speed of charge the value of charge will remain intact it will not change at all right so these six were the quite uh, major or main properties of the charges now let's talk about uh, the methods of charging let's talk about the methods of charging there are mainly three methods for an object to get charged first one is conduction <coughs> second one is friction and the third one is simply induction we will deal with each of the modes of charging the object at later stages one by one right now I just want to deal with Coulomb's law. How to deal with Coulomb's law? What does Coulomb's law do? Is Coulomb's law states, or it defines, or it uh, gives us the net force acting on a charge including the effect of medium for example let's suppose I have two charges Q1 and Q2 separated by a distance R then the force acting between these two charges is proportional to the product of charges that is Q1 Q2 force is proportional to this and force is also inversely proportional to the square of the distance so what I get is k q1 q2 by r square so this is the force acting between the two charges q1 and q2 uh, as far as the direction of these uh, of this force is concerned the direction is always direction of force is always along the line joining is along the line joining two charges for example let's say the q1 was positive and the q2 is negative <coughs> then uh, force on this q1 and this q2 can be easily found that this negative will attract this positive charge so positive charge will experience a force in this direction and obviously the negative charge will get attracted towards this positive charge so this negative charge will 
experience a force on the left hand side while this positive charge will experience a force on the right hand side like this the value of force is already known to us which is uh, um, uh, which can be found by this method or by this uh, coulomb's law k q1 q2 by r square right what does that uh, k is there in that uh, k q1 q2 by r square we can understand that k was 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught where epsilon naught is simply stated as the permittivity permittivity of free space or vacuum epsilon naught is called the permittivity of free space or the permittivity of vacuum the value of epsilon naught is recommended to be learned which is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 if I put the value of this epsilon naught uh, in this 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught then the value of k that I'll obtain is 9 into 10 to the power 9 and obviously this is only for the cases where the medium is air or where the medium is this vacuum if there is any other medium then the force acting on the charges or the on the charge q2 will get changed by this which can be found by this uh, expression 1 upon 4 pi epsilon medium epsilon medium is what epsilon medium is permittivity of the medium in which the charges are present for example <coughs> Q1 and Q2 are kept as the separation R in a medium, let's say water. Let's say water. Then I'll have to use epsilon of water in the formula. So my force in this case will become 1 upon 4 pi epsilon water Q1, Q2 and by R square. So epsilon medium will get replaced by epsilon of water because the medium between the char two charges is water in this case so whatever is the medium we have to substitute the value of epsilon of that medium in which the two charges are these two charges are present so from that point of view it is quite easy to find net force on q2 so this is the net force on q2 including the effect of in fact this force f on q2 includes effect of <coughs> q1 and medium whatever the medium may be right so the main thing is that this force uh, k q1 q2 by r square or 1 by 4 pi epsilon medium q1 q2 by r square it all it is always going to give you the force on q2 including the effect of q1 as well as the medium so it gives the net force so this formula or the coulomb's law gives us the net force including the effect of q1 and the medium so if somebody asks me what is the vector form uh, of this uh, Coulomb's law then I can simply say that <coughs> let's say if I am given a charge Q1 having position vector to be R1 and some charge Q2 is also kept here at some position vector R2 this is x-axis this is y-axis and if I have to find force on Q2 due to q1 then the force in vector form will be k q1 q2 r2 vector minus r1 vector upon r2 vector minus r1 vectors mod and its q so this way i get the force on q2 due to q1 always remember that this is the position vector of the charge on which force is to be found force is to be found one more important thing about this coulomb's law is that 
Coulomb's law is only valid or applicable or you say better useful for point charges only. It means if you are given with a rod and a point charge Q2 and a, let's say a rod of length L and charge Q1 then you cannot find the force acting between Q1 that is the charge on the rod and Q2 because this Q2 is not a point charge in this case Q2 is a point charge but this Q1 which is spread on the rod is not a point charge so you cannot calculate force using the Coulomb's law directly what you'll have to do here is you'll have to uh, divide this rod into many parts and then you'll have to integrate the force acting on Q2 due to the charge of rod which is Q1 so in next lecture we'll be dealing with uh, a couple of examples involving Coulomb's law